I'm going to do the next talk, and the reason for that is that it's going to be easier to stay on time. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate the, the crown because it's, it's pretty much, we, we'll do that in a lab together today. Uh, let me see, hold on. To stay on time, let's talk about regenerative medicine. I don't have any financial affiliation with any of these companies. So this has been the, one of the greatest reasons why I rewrote my textbook last year is that I felt that in, in the last few years, this has been the, the most important thing I've done for my, for my hair business to get better results. Um, it started with looking at this photograph that Gary Hitzik had shown up in Alaska and it was half, he did PRP on one side of the scar and the other side he did it and it was like, wow. Now I'll tell you the truth, you can't do this. You cannot PRP yourself out of a bad scar. It require, the, the way to get a good scar is to have a beautiful harvest that's non-transected and it's, that's not under much tension. But my point of this is not to show you you can PRP your way out of a bad scar, it's to say, oh wow, it started to elicit thinking in my head. So I started with the, the angel system, uh, with the uh, uh, autologel system and it worked really well. So honestly, all the systems I've worked have worked well. I don't want to promote one company or the other, but this worked well. Uh, the reason I switched over to the angel system, why am I mentioning brands? Just because these, these are systems that I use, people want to know, and, that, and, and this helped me get a, a greater amount of quantity that I was able to titrate a little bit more effectively to the, the way I wanted to. And the reason I, um, this is different from like orthopedics, in orthopedics you need two cc's. In a scalp, you've got a huge terrain to cover. You've got donor areas, you've got grafts to cover. So I want quantity, I want quality, I want to be able to titrate it. So initially I was working, um, and you've, my previous presentations talked about a 2X concentration of platelets over physiologic. And then some of my colleagues challenged me last year to start moving to maybe 5X. And I don't know if there's science with either one, to be very frank with you. And there's a lot of voodoo with this. So this is a little bit of experimentation without a lot of, you know, experience. it's not without a lot of, you know, prospective randomized controlled study. And I've seen better results now. With, and I started actually using 5X with my non-surgical patients. In other words, patients just coming in with some balding that I wanted to inject. I saw better outcomes, so I started doing that with my surgery. So I'm using about a 5X concentration. And the only way you're gonna get, this is just showing the dilution table to get the 5X concentration. The, ol the only way you're gonna get that concentration is if you have enough quantity on the front end to concentrate it. Because if you are harvesting this much blood, it's very hard to get that level of concentration and have enough quantity, okay? Um, I was listening to uh, a lecture by Dr. Scalfani out of New York about platelet poor plasma and activity is very, very high. So the point where I, I'm now using platelet poor plasma in the donor area just because I've got more stuff that I can use and I, I, I'm placing it there. I'm really focusing on using the PRP where it counts, which means in the, the recipient bed and with my graphs, the areas that I, I, I'm super concerned about. The one uh, caveat is I was using the A cell in the donor area, and I actually had a little bit of widening scar. Um, and uh, Jerry Cooley talks about being very careful putting A cell at, in, in, he places it deep to the, the follicles with a strip. Um, and I just found that the risk is that there can be a little widening because the A cell is causing some stimulation. What is A cell essentially? It's a um, acellular uh, porcine matrix, bladder matrix, that has been morselized. And, and I, I, there's all, it comes in all different varieties in cocktails. I use 100 milligrams fine, fine, fine powder, I mix it with the PRP, and then I inject it. How do I do it? You'll hear my cocktail recipe here. My, my way is not better than someone else's way, it's just the way I do it, because everyone wants to know how does someone do it, right, beyond the theory. So I'll just tell you how I do it. It's not meant to be dogmatic, it's meant to just be experiential in terms of what's worked for me. So here's my mix. So essentially what I do now, and it's a little bit different from what I did a, about a year or two ago, is uh, I, I still draw 120 cc's of blood because the system I use has to be drawn in 60 cc aliquots to, for it to work. I concentrate it down with a 7% hematocrit, and the reason for this, you know, the argument is you don't want blood in there, uh, or sorry, you don't want hematocrit in there because of pro-inflammatory cells. But I talked to the scientific head, he, he argues that at least with his system that you get the most active part of the platelets. And so far I've had a good result. And to be honest with you, if you're injecting in there, you're not getting blood in the area. I mean, it's almost like ludicrous to me that you want this perfectly pure PRP with no blood because you're injecting into a bloody area. Now, if you're working in an orthopedic world and you're trying to get in a joint, okay, fine, maybe that makes sense. 
I'm trying to get the most active platelets I can for the maximal results. So I'm, I'm concentrating this down to 14 cc's, and then I'm using, I'm splitting that usually equally with, I'm, again, I'm mixing that with the uh, 100 milligrams of fine powdered uh, A cell. I'm injecting seven cc's into the into the area the, the the donor area, and then I'm using it for the grafts. Now, what does that mean using it for the grafts? You actually don't want to. You, I'm, you're going to hear my storage medium for the grafts. I'm actually storing my grafts some, somewhat differently. I'm using the PRP and A cell right before the grafts are placed. Why is that? F few reasons. One, the grafts I want to be chilled, and the PRP is works at physio works physiologically at body temperature. You don't want that thing chilled down, and and PRP can sit there for many hours and have no problem. But the key with it is you have to draw it off your body before the first cut. And the reason for that is that you want the most active, bioactive PRP in there. And the only way you can do that is not having other inflammation in your body pulling away your, your active platelet. So you want to draw it from the first get-go. I do that even before an IV is started if we're using an IV in that case. Then, uh, so I, I store my, my grafts and then right before I place them, or I, my staff place them, I, I coat all the, 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 uh, the, the grafts with PRP and A cell before placement. It doesn't affect the slipperiness. It seem, seems to work fine. The, um, without surgery, it's a pretty similar formula. The, the key thing with this is you've got to activate it, and so you can activate it many ways with calcium gluconate, uh, thrombin, et cetera. There's been some reports of thrombin issues with either allergies or um, uh, intravascular injection causing issues. So uh, what I do now is, uh, I don't actually don't even use a derma roller, I just use a 25 gauge needle that I've injected it with and just make little uh, stab sites because I find that with a derma roller I can have more issues of shock loss. How, off, how many series do I do? I'm still in this early phase of trying to figure this out, but I see good results even with one, but now I'm starting to do a series of three, you know, every month or two months just to go through that and boost it. But again, if you ask five colleagues, you're gonna get five different answers because no one has truly rock solidly created a, uh, a dogmatic way of doing this yet in terms of science. So this is a little bit of voodoo. So I put this slide up here just to remind you that you've got to activate your, your uh, PRP. What does activation mean? It means mechanically or chemically. You got to do something to stimulate it. So if you're doing surgery and you've made recipient sites, that's activation. If you're not doing surgery, you've got to do something to elicit that, that response from the PRP. That's going to either be a, a chemical way like calcium gluconate thrombin or through just needle sticks or derma roller. Does that make sense? You need to activate your PRP in some form or fashion. So the other question people ask is, do you put your PRP before you make recipient sites, after recipient sites? The answer is yes, I can do either one. I've done both and I've had great results either way. I started doing it after recipient sites the reason for it is just the logical uh, point of my colleagues have encouraged me to, to say, look, you've got all this tumescent sitting there, now you've washed all your PRP. Um, wait until all your sites are done and right before placement inject, and that's what I do. The only caveat is because you know, you guys are spraying bl blood, blood products into areas with little recipient sites, wear goggles. So, you know, that's maybe common sense, but it also goes slowly, so it doesn't go squir squirting everywhere, but it will squirt a little bit. So this is just PRP and A cell, uh, no, no surgery, but it's, the one thing is, I will say I'm adamantly in favor of using this in combination with surgery, and I'm not 100% convinced in every single person without surgery, I'm getting consistent results. So I don't want you to go home and just go, you know, I'm gonna PRP everyone to death and overpromise that. Surgery does well with these, with these, with these fertilizers, I call them for lay reasons, uh, to, to help promote growth. But as a standalone modality without surgery, I cannot tell you that it's as effective as, as, as all that. But I'm seeing better results with the 5X concentration than with the, uh, with the 2X. Uh, this is just showing you a gentleman that I did uh, a, a transplant. There's a colleague of mine out of Brazil, Marcel Pichon, who's actually running this year's meeting, who talks about something called PGI, which means that a patient, if you have all variables held c constant, and you, do, and you have a great surgical team, that patient, if he grows at 70%, he may always grow at 70%. And what I've found to explode the notion of PGI, in my opinion, is using these fertilizers. So this is a guy that came in, his growth was poor, I came back to another session and I added PRP, and wow, bam, it just blew up. Now I made some slight modification to my surgery, but not much, mainly this was done with fertilizers. And I, these are just, Another example where the, the, it's hard to see in this one, but I'll tell you it's significantly better after I added the PRP and A cell. This was in the early phases when I was deciding should I use it or not. Now everyone gets it uh, regardless. Um, the only thing is if you're dealing with someone uh, that is Muslim, you have to tell them about 
the, the porcine, um, or Jewish, the porcine uh, bladder, I tell them that it's, ex it's, it's a cell, there are no cells there, but if they say, look, they don't want to do it, of course you, you don't want to do it for them if it's against their religious practices. And this is just showing the same thing. B before a procedure without the, with, without the a PRP and A cell, and then uh, with. So finally, um, liposomal ATP is, what it's doing is that it's stabilizing the, the um, the, the sodium potassium pump so that the cells don't blow up. In other words, it's keeping an osmolarity, that gradient that's going to be well preserved and minimizing the trauma to these grafts that are very fragile ex vivo. So I use that in combination with this hypothermosol, which is basically a storage medium that is used for like transplants, organ transplants, etc. And this combination has worked well. And, and I added this about two years ago after already using PRP now for about five years, PRP and A cell, and I found another uptick in results. So what did I see? I saw earlier growth, finer growth. So I really believe there's a component of, of benefit. What is my mix of this? A little confusing. You can take a photo of this if you like. It is in my uh, second edition first textbook if you want. But essentially what it is, is, um, and it's confusing. I'm going to try to walk you through it. But again, this can, it's not perfect. But it's 50 cc's of the ATP and 100 cc's of the hypothermosol. That's what I get. I take, the ten, take 10 cc's of the ATP out. Uh, and put it into the 100 cc's of hyperthermosol, that's gonna be my storage medium. I take that, that, that mixture, split it 50-50, and I have 50 cc's of that, so in other words, half that mixture used for the initial strips. When the strip is taken out, I place it immediately into that so that, uh, to keep it in a, um, in, a, in a good, stabilized condition, and I take the other half and split it e equally for all my sliver bowls, for my sliver bowls. I then take the remaining 40 cc's of ATP, mix it with 400 cc's of plasma light, and, I, and from that mixture, number six and seven comes out, I have 100 cc's for a post-operative spray, which I'll talk about in a moment, and 300 cc's for spraying the grafts and uh, just keeping everything uh, moist and, and, the, and the recipient bed. The, the, the spray afterwards, I'm using it almost, I call it almost like CPR for the grafts, so I believe this is very helpful. I do have the patient spray about every hour. I even have them wake up a few times at night, every couple hours at night for the first one or two days. And I believe that first one or two days is critical. And then I have them just drain it out for the first, whatever, three to four days when, when they have, however they have in that much in that bottle. And this is something I've seen a better result. I mean, I, I'm just gonna, and this is not science. I, I've not checked hair mass index or anything, but I've noticed faster growth uh, more consistent growth, and a little bit finer growth, like the growth looks even uh, softer. So I, I'm, I'm liking this. Stem cells, uh, Ken in the back is really the, the guru here. I'm going to say nothing about this because this is beyond what I know, but this is one of the things that I think is right in the forefront of where we are. You can ask him about it. I use some microcin, which is I, no affiliation with all this. All it is is, a, is it, it helps kill um, about 99% of all the bacteria, fungi, viruses in about 30 seconds and this is all the list of things it kills and with no toxicity to the tissue. So I use this uh, as a, I, I, I clean my patients before uh, every procedure with this and I clean them after the procedure with this. And so these are just fertilizers, okay? And I think that the fertilizers can be very powerful to, for growth. Okay, Jim, you're up.